This is just a heads up with regards to this episode of AC Radio, as we talk about some major plot spoilers for Tales of the Abyss around 8 minutes in. If you want to skip that part of the show, jump ahead to the 16 minute mark after the spoiler warning. We hope you enjoy the show. Hey everyone, this is Pam Bam Richard representing Abyssal Chronicles for this episode of AC Radio. I'm accompanied here by AC staff Dimension Slip, AC owner Abby, and we're joined here with a very special guest for today's show. Our guest at this time has performed in roles such as Ryuko Matoi from Kill a Kill, Gone from Hunter Hunter, Aro from Puyo Puyo Tetris, and more recently, Megumin in Konosuba God's Blessing on This Wonderful World. But for us Tales fans, we know her as Eleanor Hume from Tales of Berseria. We are introducing our guest at this time, Erica Mendez. How's everything going, by the way? Everything's good. I'm glad to finally get this interview rolling. It took us a while to schedule. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of behind the scenes stuff. I know our patrons have been waiting for a bit of time for this to go through, but we finally got things rolling. And um, how we're going to start this is that we, um, you've kind of shown that you are a very huge Tales fan, and we kind of want to know about your history with the Tales franchise. So um, how did you get introduced to the franchise and where did you go from there? Oh man, uh, I forget how I was initially introduced. It might have just been like, cause I'm a huge fan of JRPGs in general. Like I pretty much started, um, I watched my cousin play Chrono Trigger, you know, way back when uh, it was on the NES, I think. And um, I- Super Nintendo, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I watched him play that and, you know, watched him play Final Fantasy games. And then, you know, I started trying to look up more JRPGs. And I think I found Tales of Symphonia. Like I knew Tales was a huge series and Symphonia was to acquire at the time. And I had a GameCube. So (laughs) I bought it and I loved it. Like absolutely loved it. And then, um, Abyss came out and I was super excited for Abyss and uh, played that one. And that one continues to be like my absolute favorite to this day. I just love the cast <laughs> and the story. Good choice. It's great. Yeah. Um, and I played a few of the others. They didn't grab me quite as well as Abyss and Symphonia did. Um, but I have a lot of them. And um, that recently I've acquired a lot of them and I plan on playing them to see if like my taste has changed. So I have, like, I've played a little bit of uh, Legendia and um, gosh, I had, uh, what was it? Tales of the World, Radiant Mythology. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have that one. Uh, I never owned an Xbox. So I, but I had won Tales of Asperia from those enthusiast sites that they used to have, that band I used to make. So I had won a copy of it and got it for free and would play the game on um, whatever Xbox I could find, whether it would be like my sisters or my friends, but I never got a chance to beat it. But now I can, you know, the, <laughs> the PS4 version just came out. So I need to get a copy of that so I can actually play it. Um, but yeah, and then of course, Bruzeria. So I was super hyped to uh, find out that I had gotten the audition for that and then eventually got cast. Um, and it kind of, I feel like Bruzeria really rekindled my love for the franchise. Nice. That's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, when you mentioned that uh, you won a contest or some sort for Bandai Namco, do you remember exactly what that was? Because I recall following contests around the time that Vesperia was going to be released. And I think it does the name Tales Brigade ring a bell? Yeah, it was that website, Yeah, I think, right? Yeah, the Enthusiast website. They had that. And because I followed that one and then the um, Eternal Sonata one. So I won copies of both games from that website where you like did various quests, you know, and turn stuff in and got points and then could get free copies of things. And yeah, that's where I'd gotten the game from. Oh, actually, no. Yeah, I think of what you're, I know what you're talking about now, because that's like a totally separate thing from Tales Brigade. But you oh, okay. collected Tales points. Tales Brigade does sound familiar, though. Yeah, it was a point where like... Um, fans were allowed to like submit fan works to get like uh, special prizes for Vesperia's release Uh-oh. and Dawn of the New World around 2008 oh. and I think a part of it also included like having to um, send over Christmas songs that are like Tales themed or fan art oh. that's related to Christmas it was it was a very amusing time when they were pushing for <laughs> the advertisement of the games but uh, yeah 
So it seems like you've played uh, several Tales games and whatnot, and out of curiosity, from the games that you've played, who would be your favorite Tales character then? Oh, uh, actually, Jade is probably my absolute favorite. <laughs> good choice. Erica has good I, taste. I love him. <laughs> He's so snarky, and I just love it. I just His interactions with all the characters in Abyss are just amazing. He makes me laugh every time. <laughs> So, considering with uh, Jade in mind, then, I'm going to go on with this question to presume that the answer might be Abyss, but which plot calls out to you the most, then? Yeah, probably Abyss. I just really connected with a lot of those characters. Symphonia is definitely, like, a very, very close... Well, I, I don't know, because I really love Brasaria too, like, all bias aside. Um, so, I don't <laughs> know, I, I feel like Brasaria and Symphonia kind of fight for second place for me. But Abyss, I don't know, there's just something about the whole like coming of age and like finding your true self thing with Luke that just really spoke to me, I think. Yeah, like Luke's character development did definitely speak a lot to a lot of the players, especially when it came out in 2006. Mm -hmm. And um, so when you mentioned that his character development is a big factor of Abyss being your favorite, are there any other points to that game that call out to you as to why it's your number one Tales game? Ooh, asking me tough questions here. <laughs> um, just like the, the backstories and stuff like that. Like I loved finding um, uh, more information about a lot of the characters. Like I did the uh, um, the Emperor Peony stuff and uh, Jade's backstory with um, Nephilim. I, I'm blanking. I have a terrible memory, so forgive yep, me if I get names correct. wrong and stuff. Cool, yeah. Like all that stuff with uh, him and and his sister and Dist and all that and Peony and all that. So I just loved like even the side characters were just so good. Which side character is out of curiosity? Well, yeah, like Peony and then like you know, uh, kind. I mean, Dist isn't really a side character. He's like pretty, a pretty major villain. But um, I I loved uh, Ion and and uh, like Annis and um, I'm blanking on the. Who is he? The, the white-haired one from Frings? the Malkut Empire? Oh, yeah, that's Frings. Yeah, that's Frings. That's Frings. Yeah, and uh, like Noelle and like her interactions with Guy and stuff like that. Guy is also like one of my my top favorite characters in the franchise. So, mm. And his backstory was great too. Yeah, that that's definitely like a huge part of like what drives well, a lot of those characters really did like at the end of the day mesh together and their motivations essentially uh brought up to the whole climax of that game. Um I guess for a uh, spoiler note aside or a spoiler note on actually, are there any like spoiler points of that game that you kind of want to like gush about or talk about uh specifically about Abyss that sort of like still holds true to you to this day? Um yeah, I think like finding out, uh, sorry, I have a cat here, so excuse her if she meows. Um, uh, just the whole like finding out Guy's backstory and like his true name and, and what family he's from and his real reasons for uh, kind of where he is in life and how he secretly harbors like a hatred for Luke, but through his time, you know, spending with Luke, he learns to kind of, you know, actually become his friend, but he still has that like slight inner hatred for him. Um, just the whole dynamic between Guy and Luke is really good. And uh, just how Guy deals with all of that, I think is really cool. I've never seen anything like that, I think, in a game really. Yeah, it's a very strong tension between yes. the two characters, especially when you consider exactly what you mentioned, like Guy's hidden um, intentions for Luke, like his hatred, yet at the same time he's, he seems like a very nice guy, no pun intended. But <laughs> so, like, um, to go further into it, like for Abyss, how did you feel about the whole replica reveal? Oh yeah, that was pretty crazy. Um, but it's the whole thing, like, which I think added a lot of the the charm and why I like it too. Is just the whole like Luke realizing all this and how you know the person he really looked up to ends up being like a terrible person in the end. Um, that kind of like, you know, don't, uh, was like, don't truly idolize your heroes and stuff like that. Or like, be careful who you idolize. Um, and yeah, him just kind of like, 
finding himself and realizing that even though he is like a clone um, or a replica, uh, he is still like his own person. And like, I think everybody else in the cast kind of helps him realize that. And he goes to that major change near the end of the game where he like cuts his hair and that's a really cool moment. And um, kind of like reconciling with Ash and all that at the end, I think was, uh, I don't know, there's just really special moments that um, I didn't know uh, could be done in games at the time. I just think the story overall was just really well-rounded and I liked it. It was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and to to kind of like go further into that whole moment when he did cut his hair, because it happened like halfway through the game when he had the whole spoiled personality, and then later mm-hmm. it's revealed to the player, oh, it's because he's a replica. He started from a clean slate. When it came to the moment of the, because um, actually a couple months ago, Slip and I were talking about this quite a bit, actually. Um, oh, yeah. When it came to the scene, I don't know if you recall, but when the entire mining town goes down into the miasma and Mm -hmm. when the entire party is basically very mean to Luke and whatnot. Do you feel as though like that's justified or, or is Luke in the right or the wrong or did he deserve that kind of beration during that moment? Like, what did you think about that scene overall? Oh, um, I mean, (laughs) as someone who didn't, fully like Luke at the beginning of the game. Um, I feel like it was kind of just right. Cause he is a brat and he doesn't really, um, he never feels like he truly, at, the, at least at the beginning of the game, he never felt like he truly deserved anybody criticizing him. Um, even if it was like justified. So I think, yeah, I, I think they did, you know, despite it not truly being his fault, I think he does is a character who needs um, to kind of be scolded uh, Mm -hmm. to to kind of pull him out of that super brat mode, that super spoiled mode that he grew up um, experiencing as a noble and as a, you know, someone who didn't have his memories or so he thought. Um, So people kind of like, you know, uh, babied him and, and let him always be right. But uh I think it was justified in the the fact that like it really did help him grow as a person. Um, so whenever anybody scolded him, I was like, yeah, he needs that. Like <laughs> he really <laughs> deserves that in a way, um, even though, you know, he couldn't control everything that happened. Yeah. I really agree with that because I actually went in depth about Luke's um, aversion to scolding in one of those things I wrote a long time, uh, a while back. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he really doesn't like being scolded until like there was the point later on in the game where um, Elder McGovern tells him that, you know, like Jade only scolds people that he likes. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the only time that Luke started to view scolding in a different light. Like yeah. he became more open minded in that respect. Yeah. That, that's a good point. I don't think you actually mentioned that to me last time when we talked about that, huh? Um, like, my mind's a little bit blown right now after <laughs> hearing that. But yeah. But, but yeah, I'm glad that um, people are picking up on that because, um, yeah. So, with the bits in mind, uh, um, how many times have you played through that game, considering how long the game is? Oh, gosh. I'd say at least three times on the PS2. Um, I own it on the 3DS, or not the 3DS, was it just the regular DS? I think it was it, just it the was regular the 3DS. DS. It was the 3DS. Oh, 3DS, okay. Yeah. yeah, I own it on the 3DS as well, and I started playing that, but there's just so many games out right now. It's <laughs> it's hard to like fully invest myself in a game, even though I really like, I would say Abyss is probably one of my fa- top favorite games ever. Um, but even so, like, I don't feel as much of an obligation to, you know, once I pick it up and start playing it, it's not like, I don't feel the need to immediately, like, beat it as soon as possible because, you know, there's other stuff. And I basically know the story as it is anyway. So uh, there will be times when I just kind of pick it up and start playing it, but I won't finish it. But even though, you know, maybe I had started playing it, like, a few months ago, I'll forget where I was or like what happened. So (laughs) I'll like go back and restart it just to kind of get that sense again. And it's kind of like an endless cycle. 
but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's always a issue when it comes to JRPGs, especially when you're trying to keep up with the entire franchise. You、yeah. get into a game and it's like, oh, where am I? Like a couple months after, when you find、mm-hmm. the time to play it again. So, <laughs> exactly. When, when it, speaking of time,、uh, sorry, go on, Abby. Yeah, like sometimes you're just going to pick up the game to relive a particular part of it, or like you just get the feel of the game again. Yeah.、Uh, yeah. Yeah. I- Kind of, I don't know. I feel like if I if I want to like experience a particular part again, like YouTube is such a good medium for that. Like I'll just,、oh, you know, go to a, a a scene that I like and just kind of like relive that moment. So then I don't have to, you know, traverse through 30 hours of a game. <laughs> to get there. I, Time I, is I valuable.、Agree. YouTube is amazing. <laughs> It is. <laughs> so speaking of time, then, like if you did have. Like that additional time. Like, if you were given like enough time to play through one more Tales game this year, what kind of Tales, what Tales game would you actually spend that time with? Oh,、um, I really did like Vesperia when I started playing it.、Um, so I think I might want to pick that one up again. But I don't know. I hear, you know, so many people have different favorites of the, the franchise. So it's, I don't know, it's hard to say. I really just want to. I mean, the ideal thing obviously would be to have time to play everything, but. <laughs> That's true.、Um, yeah, I think, yeah, Vesperia is probably the, the top one、um, since that was the one I, was, I invested the most time in before I、uh, lost the ability to, to use somebody's Xbox. I mean, I, granted, I'll have to start it over again if I play it, but I really I like the characters in that one a lot too. Like Rita was really cool,、um, and Yuri is kind of a, a different type of. Of protagonist, I think, which is really fun. Yeah, it was very much different from the mold. And when you mention like other Tales games that people would mention as their favorites, which ones come to mind?、Um, I have friends that really love Graces.、Um, I know a lot of people、mm. love Zestiria.、Um, Destiny is one I hear about a lot.、Um, But you know, me having started on Symphonia, I don't have a lot of knowledge about a lot of the earlier ones. So I'd be curious about those, but I'd also really love them to just be remade so that I don't have to track down old copies of things. Yeah. <laughs> Or like, you know, fan translations and stuff, which I hear are actually really good, the fan tra- translations. But、um, I don't know, I just don't have the, the patience to do emulators at this point. I'd rather just have like a disc and be able to pop it into my. PS4, like download a copy, you know? Yeah, we've been waiting for digital downloads for a long time. But that aside,、um, <laughs> when, when it comes to <laughs> when you. <laughs> yeah.、Um, so, because、uh, we know that, sh- well, you're a voice actor and you're huge into the Tales franchise. Do you know of any other voice actors who really like the series? Who really like Tales?、Um, oh, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Um, I've been trying to get my boyfriend, who is also a voice actor, into the series. I made him play Abyss, and he had already <laughs> played Symphonia, I think, before then.、Um, I try to get him to watch me play Berseria, but he has、uh, sometimes even a shorter attention span than I do. <laughs> so <laughs>、uh, it, it, it's been increasingly harder for us to like, sit down and watch each other play games because we're always like, ooh, what if we like. You know, I'll sit down and watch, but then I'm also like distracted by my computer. So I'll be watching YouTube videos and vice versa and stuff when we're each playing different games. But、uh, yeah, I mean, he's the only one that comes to mind. I don't know if he's like super in love with the franchise, but I know he appreciates it.、Uh, but as for other people, I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much a conversation that comes to mind. It's like, do my friends like Tales of? No, they're talking about Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts. Oh, yeah. Kingdom yeah, Hearts. The usual three. <laughs> Shout、yeah. out to Kingdom Hearts 3 coming out soon. Yeah. <laughs> so,、um, regarding the history, since you know quite a lot about, well, quite a bit, and are aware of like, the several games past and present, if ever you were given the opportunity to voice a Tales character from the history of the franchise, Who would you want to voice and why? 
Oh gosh, is this like characters that haven't been voiced in English, or just anyone? If any I any character, like anyone. any character who has been voiced, who hasn't been voiced, World's Your Oyster. Oh, oh man, um, hmm. I don't know. I really, I do a lot of young boy voices, so I oh. feel like I would have to default to like I really loved Ion and Abyss, or Genus. I think is is a really good character. I'm actually watching, um, I have a friend who streams on uh, Twitch and she's actually doing her first playthrough of Symphonia. So I'm like reliving that right now when I can catch her stream. And uh, Genus is like just the cutest. I love him so much. (laughs) So probably one of those two, just because they, not that I'm like, uh, I need to only voice little boys, but I don't know. I feel like I have the most fun doing it, especially with like young boys in the, the Tales series. I feel like they're really spunky and just the kind of character that I, I really do like playing more than anything. Yeah, now that you bring that up, all the little boys do have a little bit of attitude to them in the Tales franchise. I yeah. Just, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> what? <laughs> what was that all about? Oh, hi, cat. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. It's still your cat. Sorry. I was just like, I thought that was Abby for a moment there. Um, oh, I didn't say thank you. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, when. Also, since you've uh, played like some Tales games in the past, for you've heard the English performances and whatnot, were there any voice acting performances that sort of like stood out to you and kind of just like was something that you kept in mind when you're going into your career choice as a voice actor? Oh, I, I think I have to go back to Jade, honestly. Uh, <laughs> like, wow. Her performance as Jade is, like, one of my favorite performances of a character just in any JRPG I've ever played. Um, I actually, because I, you know, I'm a guest at conventions now, but I used to go to conventions because I'm a, you know, huge nerd. Um, I've been a, a really <laughs> big dork for a while I say dork in like the most loving way, by the way. Um, no, I've been like a video game and anime for a very long time. So um, I've been to conventions. Um, my local convention when I was younger was Anime Central in Chicago. That's where I grew up. Uh, and uh, Kirk Thornton was there one year. And I was super excited because, you know, Tales of Ibis had been out for a little while. And Jade, <laughs> again, is my favorite character. So I went and I met him and, you know, got a voice recording and stuff. And it was really cool. Um, and I've actually like I I get to talk to Kirk and work with him now which is really funny Um, (laughs) the first time I met him I had to try really hard not to fangirl like I'm very careful about trying not to to remind people that you know I uh, am like a really huge fan of their work because I want to be seen as a professional (laughs) as much as possible Um, but yeah anytime I get to work with him I get like really sheepish because i'm like oh man i really love jade (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Uh, i just he's just a really cool character and just the performance is like i don't know i just i really um resonate with him as a character (laughs) i feel like i have like that dry like humor that um just in my my normal everyday life i have a pretty dry humor and um it, it sometimes i think it's hard for people to uh realize if i'm joking or not (laughs) so when i saw that jade was like that i was like oh my god this is so cool and yet granted he's like basically a sociopath and i'm i like to think i'm not a sociopath um but (laughs) i just just the other (laughs) parts of his personality i was like oh my god this is like i don't know i feel i feel this like this is this is my thing i feel like this is uh very relatable to me (laughs) Um, so when you mentioned that you're going to play Zestaria, are you planning on doing like the side quests or anything like that or just play the main story? Oh, for Zestaria? Yeah. Um, man, I will probably just get through the story. I'm not that big of a completionist. I'll probably do like occasional side quest stuff, but it's the kind of stuff that I'd have to like, I don't know, I have very little patience when it comes to that stuff and figuring it out on my own. So unless I happen to stumble upon it, um, I'd probably look up a guide if I really felt like I wanted to, you know, do like a certain thing or, or, uh, all that. Yeah. Cause the reason why I ask is because since you mentioned Kirk Thornton's performance in Abyss, um, he also shows up in Zestaria, but, um, oh, cool. 
in a particular side quest, you might want to try that one. That's all I'm going to say. If you Oh, is this the uh the Colosseum? It, He's in the Colosseum, isn't he? It, essentially, yeah, yeah. Like it, I mean, it's, <laughs> I think I knew about that. Yeah, yeah. And and we were all like very curious to see if he was going to come back and Oh yeah. He did, and we were all oh. very satisfied. And you, oh my god! If if you're a huge fan, you gotta like look up the the English um, dub of um, the Mystic Art that he does. It's fantastic, oh. fantastic. Oh man! Speaking of that, um, kind of you know going into you know why you guys invited me here. Um, <laughs> I being in Brasilia as Eleanor, who you know is a a spear user as well. Um, which was also just on its own really cool, but I got to say indignation. Yes. <laughs> as one of my spells. And I I have to admit I almost cried <laughs> because I was like, this is like the spell. Like if you're gonna say any spell, indignation is the spell. Like it's just super cool yeah. and uh very nostalgic for me, um, having played a lot of the yeah, uh not a lot, but having played earlier games in the series and yeah, it was just a really cool moment for me, honestly. <laughs> yeah, which I mean, yeah. which brings us to actually one of our um, AC patrons had this question about Berseria. Um, when you had Eleanor as as who you were casted for, what was your first impression of her when you voiced her, and um, how did you feel about her character after you voiced her? Oh, man. Um, let me, I guess, just <laughs> talk about the whole experience just in general. Uh, I auditioned for like four or five characters, I think. Oh. Um, I auditioned for Lafayette, Velvet, oh. Um, oh. Uh, the brother, I don't want to give away, <laughs> right. to yes. oh. yeah. Uh, since right. it's still a, a, a more recent game, so I auditioned for them. So, so it's four, because then Eleanor was the fourth one. I didn't audition for Magilu, which is probably for the best, because that's not... <laughs> I probably could have done something with it, but, I mean, as far as, like, Magilu, I don't play characters like that very often, and Lindbeck, Erica Lindbeck just, like, really hit it out of the park with her, so Agreed. I'm glad she got her, if anything. Um, I actually was, like really gunning for Lafayette because again just I don't know I knew it (laughs) you know voicing little boy characters that uh, that are like really cute and sweet and like whether they're spunky or not is just I don't know it's just like my favorite trope on the planet so I just fell in love with Lafayette when I first saw Brazaria just in general um but like if anything I was like oh maybe you know maybe Velvet but you know (laughs) as cool as that would have been, like knowing how much she tears her throat up <laughs> in the, wow. the series. Like I've played characters yeah. like that before, but just her voice is so low and she's got to scream so much. It's like, I'd like to be able to work other jobs during the week. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I have to admit, Eleanor was like lowest priority for me. Cause I didn't know very much about her at the time. Cause I don't think there was very much information when we, um, auditioned for this initially so when i did get cast as her they didn't tell me who i got i just kind of came in and they're like you're playing this character and i was like oh okay cool i'm just really happy to be in the game like i don't care who i am i could have been random townspeople or whatever and i would have been like over the moon um but it took me a little while to warm up because i just i don't play regal characters very often like her so i was like i kind of struggled i think a little bit um but as I kind of got to know her through the game, because again, like we were doing this when there wasn't a whole lot of information out. Because I think, yeah, we finished, I'm pretty sure we finished this game before it even came out in Japan. Oh, um, really? Yeah, that's how, how early the process can be sometimes. So again, there was like very little information about anything. Um, so I, as I was learning about her, I really just fell in love with her and just how, um, you know, how caring she can be. Um, again, I don't want to give away too much about the game since it's what it came out like two years ago. I mean, I know that's kind of, you know, so it's pretty far away, but still just in case people haven't played it. Um, cause I want people to experience it and really enjoy it because it is a good game. I really do love it. Um, but yeah, just like her whole, I love characters that kind of have like a well-rounded personality. So, you know, she starts off a certain way at the beginning of the game and then really turns around 
um, based on her experiences. Um, and then just in general, like one of my favorite parts of the game is like how much the cast as a whole just actually hates each other. I, I thought that was like a really fun dynamic because usually it's like, oh yeah, we were childhood friends and like all this stuff and we, we have a common goal, but it's like, the characters in Rosaria are just so much like, yeah, I'm only here because like we want to kind of accomplish the same thing in the end. But you know, after this is done, I'm out. <laughs> uh, it kind of changes at the end of the game, of course. But um, yeah. I just love that whole initial dynamic where everyone just kind of is like fighting and really does not like each other. And they all have their own motives and like, you know, um, whether they're, they're good or bad. <laughs> and uh yeah, just Eleanor is like her dynamic with it, with Velvet and um, just kind of how she, how much she really just hated her at the beginning. And then you kind of saw her softer side when it came to um, Lafayette and um, I'm blanking on her name, the demon girl. Uh, uh, Moana. Uh, Moana. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, just like... Moana. Oh, Kamoana. My apologies. Kamoana. Yeah. They, they, they had to rename her Kamoana because... Just Moana you know, in Japanese. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Confusing, but... Yeah, so just her dynamic with, like, them and how sweet she could be, and then, like, her hatred she had for Velvet and just her kind of indifference to everyone else, I think, um, just really was a, a neat um, aspect of her character. And she's just cute in general. Like, I really just love her character design. Um, and yeah, I just, <laughs> I can't, you know, not love her enough. I feel like <laughs> she's become really special to me and I'm glad a lot of people uh, like her as well. I just wish because my, my thing is like collecting merchandise with my characters and whenever they come out with merchandise, it's very rarely Eleanor, <laughs> which kind of uh. makes me upset. Uh, there's a lot of Velvet and a lot of Aizen, who <laughs> admittedly is you know, one of the best characters in the game. Mm -hmm. I love Aizen. But uh, yeah, I just wish she had more more love in Japan so that she would get more merch. <laughs> yeah. uh, and talk to the fandom about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, this is sort of a question that's more so like... Um, uh, out of curiosity, um, with regards to the acting for Eleanor, like for any choices that you feel like sharing, like what choices did you made that allowed you to fully embody her character when you were performing the role? If anything that you'd like to share, yeah, I tend to, uh, like I, like I said before, I tend to play you know like younger characters, especially young boys, and and a lot of tomboy characters. So with Eleanor. Um, I had to be careful not to slur my speech because I, I tend to do that just in normal life. Like I'm a very sloppy speaker. I come from the Midwest, so I think it, it might be part of that and just like how I grew up and stuff like that. And I tend to talk a lot faster if you haven't noticed. Oh, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so with Eleanor, I, I really had to be careful of like diction and, and slowing down to kind of get her, you know, kind of, she could be a pretty stern sometimes and like authoritative. So um, just slowing down and getting that, like I'm in charge. And even if you don't think I'm in charge, I need you to, to, uh, to see that I, I know I'm in charge. So I'm going to be as assertive as possible <laughs> with you. Um, and just her whole, like, you know, just her, uh, she's very like based on religion and stuff like that within that game. So I feel like that kind of the, the speech, the slower speech patterns with her really um, helped to uh, kind of show that, that side of her personality. And um, I stood, I, I tend to have like a stance with characters depending on, on what kind of character they are with her. I stood a little bit more rigid to kind of get that like authoritative, um, Ness to not that she's like super mean or anything but she has her moments where she she uh <laughs> tries to show that she's boss for sure um but then she also like gets really flustered really easily so i would kind of like loosen my stance a little bit based off that um but yeah i think that's that's all i can really think of i feel like that we recorded this an eternity ago uh <laughs> but yeah i just my most vivid memories were just like being excited for the character just in general um or being in excited to be a part of tales finally 
Um, go on. Uh, I just find it to be like an interesting coincidence because Eleanor's Japanese voice actor is oh, also yeah. very, very big into tales. So she was oh, also. Oh, she? Yes. So it's like oh basically she kind of feels the same way as you in oh. some sense. Like during Tales Fest, she was very thrilled to be in Tales Fest because, yeah, she oh. also that the kind of I thing. So did not know. That. I actually I've met her. I've met Ami Kushi. Oh, um, yeah, really? I met her at Anime Expo one year because she also voices Ryuko in Kill a Kill. Um, oh, wow. So we did like this when Kill a Kill came out. Um, they did a dub premiere at Anime Expo. Gosh, I want to say like 2014 or 15. And she was there like her and the um, woman who voices Satsuki in Japanese. And mm -hmm. uh, I was there because, you know, of course, they invited me and a bunch of the other cast members. And. Uh, I actually ran into her. Well, no, I ran into the producer of um, Anaplex who, you know, specifically worked on Kill a Kill. And she's like, hey, uh, just wait here for a moment. Like, do you want to meet Ami Kuchimizu? And I'm like, yeah, uh, of course I do. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, So she uh, she was just coming out of like the dealer's hall and she was taking a picture with somebody, I think. But the producer you know, spoke to her in Japanese and told her who I was. And I was wearing my Ryuko jacket at the time um, because, again, I'm a huge dork and I need to buy all merchandise I can get my hands on. So, and I really just love that jacket in the, the series. So I bought it and I was wearing it. And um, she saw the jacket. She got really excited and, like, turned me around <laughs> and all that. And uh, I can't remember exactly everything that was said. But because, um, you know, like, I mean, stuff got translated to me, but, you know, she... I'm sure there was stuff that wasn't translated. Um, so I didn't get the full context of it. But at one point she, uh, relating to Kill a Kill, of course, because this was way before Brazaria, um, she told me when she found out that I was the English voice of, Kill, of Ryuko and Kill a Kill, that she was glad that she had somebody to share her pain. <laughs> <laughs> because of all this, the, screaming the screaming in the yeah. show. And it was just a really cool moment. And I think I kind of walked out because they had to rush off to go somewhere else. I took a picture with her, which they didn't allow me to um, share because, you know, uh, management for Japanese oh. voice actors, I think, is really strict. So um, I have that somewhere just for my my own keepsake. And, uh, she, you know, she had to go off and do other stuff for the con. And um, I just kind of walked up, away from there. And I was just like shaking, just like like how cool like how often just as uh, uh just meeting those voice actors from japan that in that capacity like is rare enough as it is but like getting to meet someone who shares a role i think is pretty rare i've only done that twice so far in my career and i've been doing this for like five or six years at this point um so that was a really cool moment i wish i could just meet her again though to tell her now especially now knowing that she was a tales fan too like getting able to uh, being able to um, talk about tales, assuming there was a translator around because <laughs> I don't speak Japanese, unfortunately. Oh. But um, yeah, it'd be really cool just to be able to talk to her because she was really sweet to me, and it was just super cool. Like I'll never forget that experience. Um, yeah, that sounds really cool. <laughs> regarding the voice work that you did for the game, there was one particular scene that I stumbled upon where. There were some role reversals, and oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I was very happy that the director there decided to just give you all, like, normally, like, sometimes when there's, like, role reversal, they just, like, have them replace the voice, and there you go. But no, you guys just, like, embodied each other's characters, and I was kind of curious, like, how how did you feel, like, doing that, like, just going with that scene in question? Oh, it was really fun uh when i heard that we got to do that and when i specifically got to um <laughs> to mimic ben diskin as rokuro uh, i made them play me a clip of him because you know we didn't really get to hear each other during the recording process because we work alone and um we just kind of have the director to trust that the lines are going to work uh with everybody's because they're you know really long games and there's a lot of dialogue so um we don't yeah, again we don't get to hear like what the other person's doing so we're just kind of responding to dialogue in the wild and hoping it works yeah. but uh i specifically asked for a clip of ben so that i could do because i i they told me that they were trying to you know do something like that where we replicated each other's performances basically 
Um, so I, I asked for a clip of Ben and I did my best, like really gruff, lazy voice. <laughs> Cause Roku was a very gruff sounding, lazy samurai. Um, so that was fun. And then, uh, I didn't hear until the game came out what Ben did for me. <laughs> <laughs> he has a lot slightly, of range. <laughs> he does. Ben is really good. I was slightly insulted, but more so amused. <laughs> <laughs> basically, if you haven't heard it, he basically just did a really awkward falsetto. <laughs> and it was just the funniest thing. Oh man. I, I hate him. But he's great. <laughs> ben, Ben is so good. I love his work so much. Yeah, <laughs> that that was a very well done scene too. <laughs> uh, it certainly caught me by surprise because uh, I I can't really talk too much about it. But it's such a tradition in the se- series past where it's like, oh, we all know how it's going to end up. But they actually did a spin on it in this game, <laughs> and it was fantastic, like very well executed. And you all did a great job um, embodying each other's roles oh, there. Thanks. Yeah, I had fun with it. A lot of fun. I think we all did, honestly, just from having listened to the whole thing. Like, I think everybody just like, loved to get a chance to kind of be in someone else's shoes because we spend so much time with our own characters. It's just nice to kind of like do something different for at least, a, you know, a slight scene <laughs> at the very least. So, yeah. Right. Um, Just curiously, was there ever a point in time when all of you voice actors gathered together for a recording or something? No, we usually work alone um, for video games in anime. Um, it's just too hard technically to get everybody together, especially with like schedules and stuff like that. So we usually don't unless we just, you know, happen to outside of work, unless we like happen to get together. Like sometimes people and things will like, after a game is done, they'll, try to get everybody together as many people as they can to do like a unofficial like rap party. Um, but just normally, like uh, I actually used to live with Christina V who voices velvet. Um, oh. So, and we've known each other for a very long time. Um, yeah. And Erica Lindbeck and I are good friends and, you know, Ben Diskin. And um, I actually have not met um Amber Connors, who voices Lavi said yet. Like, we talk to each other on Twitter all the time, but we have not met yet. But she seems really sweet. <laughs> mm. either... But, like, out of curiosity, when you're uh, recording lines sometimes, uh, are the scenes, are the other scenes, like, for example, if it's a scene where you're talking to someone, are there already voices recorded, or it's just you? I, it depends. Um, I mean, sometimes people go in before other people. Um, and in that aspect, it's already recorded, uh, but it's not like, even if it is recorded, like I, we don't get to hear each other in most cases. There was a game I did recently that's totally unrelated where if somebody had recorded beforehand, they would play the, the lines that would like correspond and we, you know, reply to them and, and get to act off of them. But in most cases, it's just, it takes too much time, um, to set stuff like that up. And, you know, time is money, especially when it comes to <laughs> imported games and, and anime and stuff like that. And they usually try to get us done in and out as like, or not in and out as soon as possible, because sometimes, you know, you're going to have multiple sessions if you've got, you know, a few hundred lines of dialogue mm-hmm. or thousands even sometimes. Um, but yeah, they, they uh, we have to get through a lot in <laughs> as little time as possible. So uh yeah, we don't have the luxury of being able to actually hear everybody to be able to to respond to them for a fully natural conversation. That's yeah. why the, the director has to like remember as well as possible what the intentions are in the scene and like how people are responding. But it, I mean, it can be hard. So if you ever play a game and you hear something that seems like maybe a little off, like hopefully you don't like, hopefully you're immersed enough to where it just seems like we are in the same room talking to each other. Yeah. But there are times when it's like, you know, maybe say just for an example, maybe Ben recorded Rokuro like earlier that week on a Monday at nine o'clock in And then I came in to do a scene that corresponded, um, but I recorded on a five o'clock at on Friday, you know, so it's, it's hard to, to remember exactly what's going on and, and who did what, Um, because even the director doesn't get to hear things back in between that time, just because there's no time because everybody has like back to back sessions, basically. 
Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a it's a it's an interesting process. It's it's hard to describe uh, fully to to people who haven't been through it. Um, but I think a lot of people give you know flack a lot of flack for uh, things they don't fully understand. And I've tried to explain things to people, but either they don't care or <laughs> and they just don't understand yeah, you don't have the patience or anything yeah, yeah they yeah. just assume it works a certain way and yeah. it doesn't it sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't but you know it's it's hard it can be hard so but, but i try to take everything though. with a grain of salt <laughs> i agree it's it's pretty amazing. Because the, game, the game sounds great i mean from all the scenes i've seen none of them are actually you know out of place or in the conversation feels disjointed or anything. All of them yep. sound great. I'm glad. I'm really glad yeah. that you got that out of it. It's <laughs> yep. another reason why I asked if you guys ever did a group recording session because everything sounds pretty smooth. And, you know, yeah. it's like, as you said, it did give off the impression that you were all in the same room doing the thing. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that comes from a lot of like uh, practice and just general professionalism. I think that's why um, a lot of people tend to, to give some actors or companies flack because they use a lot of the same people over and over again and stuff. I think Tales is probably one of the only franchises that tries to, not to say that it's a good or bad thing, but usually you'll oh. see like a different rotating cast each game with a few exceptions here and there. Um, but in a lot of cases for imported games and, and anime, you'll see a lot of the same people, mostly because like companies will use certain people because they know that those people can do the job and they can do it quickly. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't leave a lot of room for like newcomers, unfortunately. So that's why you won't see a lot of new people most of the time. But, you know, every once in a while, you know, companies will be like, oh, well, we have the time to work with this new person. Um, so we're going to give like these people a shot or whatever, as opposed to using like, this other person and who we worked with with on um, several projects over the years and stuff like that. Another question that was on our Patreon page, um, this uh, person was wondering, right after you did the voice work with Eleanor, did you have any remnants of her persona inside of you? And if so, how long did it, did that feeling last? Oh gosh, I don't think so. I'm a total spaz. Um, <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I don't think I really, I try not to take too much of my characters with me at the end of the day. Cause you know, in some cases I have to go to a different session and record a completely different character, you know? So after Eleanor, I could have like, I don't remember what I was recording at the time, but I was probably recording something and you know, it was, <laughs> let's, let's be honest. Uh, it was probably a young boy character. Cause that's a <laughs> So, um, I can't like carry that character with me throughout the day because, you know, it's going to affect my work um, if I have another job. So I have to be able to like switch it up, you know, in my mind um, and be ready for that next that next job. So I don't think I, I really did. But yeah, I mean, every once in a while, it's like you'll have a character <laughs> like when I was recording Kill a Kill, um, I would be. Uh, uh, at, at least getting the anger out with that character, I think, was really easy for me. And sometimes, you know, maybe I'd feel like a little bit, you know, angry at things after the fact. But again, I have to kind of shake it off pretty fast <laughs> to be to not have it affect just my life in general, because I don't want to, you know, if I'm playing like a, a really upset, frustrated character, I don't want to take that into everyday life and like snap at somebody later, you know. So. I think as actors, we have to, to learn when to let that character go for the moment and then be able to snap back into it uh, the next time we come in, if we do come in for another session. That's the truth. <laughs> uh, out of curiosity, uh, now that you mention it, what's the most number of characters you've been voice voicing in a single time? Like, I'm also working on this character and then in this character and also this character. Oh, gosh. Um, hmm. I don't know. Sometimes I, uh, I have one company I work with that I work with pretty frequently and um, they will have all of my projects in one email chain. So when things get added and I happen to be in, um, in new projects or like if stuff comes back that week or that month or whatever, 
uh, I think I've had as many as like six different projects in an email chain. Oh, so wow. yeah. Um, but as far as like it, playing characters in a day, usually just with the time frame, I think I've probably played three or four characters um, in a single day at the most, but it always varies. So it's hard to give like an exact number, you know? So uh, we're almost about to wrap things up here, but um, one other question that was out of curiosity, because you did mention this before, um, because not, I don't know if it was, because you mentioned indignation, but that was actually Lafayette's said spell when he used it. Um, the spell that I think you might be Isn't referring to, you, you, I believe it was like Lost Phone Drive. The I thought I said indignation. Did too. you? Say indignation? There was a there was a spell. It was, I feel like it was indignation, but mm. I could be maybe mistaken. it's I Lost know Phone lost, Drive. Or... There was Lost Phone Drive, but I'm pretty sure there was another one. Maybe it wasn't indignation, but it was a spell that I remember um, from playing one of the games. I could have sworn maybe it wasn't. Hmm. Like I said, it was like a really long time ago. <laughs> so, right, right, right. Um, and yeah, I beat the game pretty soon after it came out, so I don't quite remember all of her spells. Right. Uh, it's just more so like, um, how did you feel when you noticed that you were voicing like quotes and lines from Biss, particularly with Lost Phone Drive and Natalia's, uh, some of her quotes when Eleanor was dressed up as Natalia? Oh, yeah. When I found out that her special costume was Natalia's. I like freaked out a little bit. Cause I was like, Oh man, this is so, it just feels so serendipitous, you know, just to, to have the character that I play in Brasilia just so happened to have a character, a uh, character's costume for my favorite game. And like the, you know, special, the mystic art um, that refers to that game as well. I just, I don't know. It just felt really cool and just felt like it was meant to be. Cause you know, like at the beginning of the process, I told you guys, I, I was, you know, kind of gunning for Lafayette, set, but, um, you know, sometimes it just feels like things happen for a reason. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like to think that anyway. So I think that, I don't know, I don't want to say Eleanor was made for me, but sometimes I like to think that it just happened for, you know, the right reasons. <laughs> <laughs> And when you, you were playing through Berseria, were you playing as Eleanor or who were you playing through throughout the majority of that oh, game? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, I think I did. Uh, what was that? I want to say. No, I think it, it was hard for me. I, uh, just Eleanor's fighting style, I think, what didn't come as, as naturally as like maybe Velvet's. But, you know, I, I had to play as Eleanor. There's like <laughs> there is no way I wasn't going to after having waited that long to play that game, because I think it came out, I want to say... It'd be ooh, January gosh, 2017. Months, it was like six months to a year after we finished recording it, and I remember specifically dying a little bit inside because um, trailers uh, came out for the game with English voices, and I heard my voice in it, um, and people would ask me, like, is this you? And I could not talk about it, <laughs> even though it was me. Um, so I was I went through a lot of torture having to keep that quiet, even though it was pretty obvious that it was me at a certain point. Um, so, yeah, I just once I got her and kind of um, got used to her play style, I, I definitely kept her for a large majority of the game. I tried out other characters, too, but um, I think other than Velvet, Eleanor felt the the best to play with in battle for me all right um i'm trying to like look through eleanor's skills here real quick and i think like the only one that kind of resembles a previous skill was like rending strike but that's similar to like rending slash or something hmm. or rending thrust by luke sure. i swear hmm I'm not seeing anything else that seems to be familiar with the previous well, tales. I don't know what character. I'm thinking of that. Maybe, maybe it just was lost. Hmm. I don't know. I could have sworn. Maybe I just read Indignation. I saw it on the page, and maybe, but that wouldn't make sense because I only my line. That's so weird. Huh? Maybe it was an audition line for Lafayette. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Hmm. 
Uh. All right. Uh, so um, it ha- has been two years. So again, or more longer than yeah. that. So uh, it's pretty understandable if your memory's a little bit hazy there. Um, <laughs> before we uh, wrap things up here, uh, do we have any other final questions from uh, yourself, Abby, or Slip, out of curiosity? Um, Abby, I think I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, same. Uh, my small question. Uh, you don't like Legendia? <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't think I said. Did I say I didn't like it? I don't. Or think, I don't no, know. I just didn't. I didn't finish it. Oh, um, okay. Although I have to admit, like, just the sometimes when games change the art style, like too much it kind of like is really jarring for me so the fact that legendia's art style was so strange compared to the rest of the series was a little i think off-putting at first but i did no i liked i liked a little bit of what i played of it i just didn't get through it enough um but like you know moses and jay i think are really cool characters so them alone would uh would make me want to play more of it Oh yeah, <laughs> but I do own oh, it. I own it now, I um, so I can play through it. That that's actually a, been a goal of mine. I want to like get through um, at least all the Tales games I can get my hand hands on, and I I think I do own like most of them at this point that have come out on recent consoles. So yeah, I'll get through it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh yeah, I had one question. I remember now. <laughs> Okay. Um, since Jade is your favorite character, um, do you have like any particular favorite quote from him? Quotes? Oh, yeah. um, oh man, gosh, he has a lot. memory is the worst. <laughs> um, I can't think of any. Or maybe something that you really like that he did in game or something. Just anytime he trashed on Luke was just really sad <laughs> to me. <laughs> Like, he was so mean to Luke. And I was like, yeah, he kind of deserves this. But also, it's just really funny, no matter what. Or just anything. He, he would tease Guy a lot, too. Oh, yeah. Guy explained and all that. Explain. Yeah, Guy yeah. explained is probably, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just really love And he trusts on most people, to be fair. Um, and then his, like, special relationship with Annis, I think, was really cool. Um, and just anytime he, like was really super terrible to dist like their whole relationship <laughs> oh they both did a great job bringing those characters to life like it was such so yeah they're so so good uh yeah kirk thornton and the other one was uh liam o'brien liam. Yeah. yeah yeah liam o'brien oh. had a very good dist laugh yes <laughs> he did very very good dist laugh We'd always just, like, imitate it so many times. Like, (laughs) my name's the Rose, not the (laughs) Ruddy. So hilarious. Because his laugh in Japanese is also pretty iconic, so I'm glad that got carried over to the English versions. (laughs) And and the scene where he's like, Jade, wait for me. Wait for me. (laughs) Oh, it was, oh, man. Fantastic work from both of them. Uh, that whole cast is just really good i love that game so much (laughs) now i want to play it again (laughs) (laughs) all right so it looks like we're wrapping things up now uh did you have anything that you'd like to plug on your end there erica Ooh, gosh um i well you kind of mentioned konosuba um that's one of the most recent things to come out that i've been a part of and that one was just so much fun. Like I love Megumin, um, so much. <laughs> She's really great. Um, she feels like she could fit into the Tales. Games, honestly, I think she'd be a, a good mage for a Tales game. <laughs> and yeah. that was a possibility. Uh, there's that, um, it got delayed, but I play Raftalia in rising of the shield hero. Which, really? Yeah. Oh. At some point, I don't know when they're going to officially um, the dub of that, but that should be coming soon, which will be really exciting. And, oh, cool. um, amazing. Yeah. And then I, uh, my first directing stint for an anime, I, uh, directed a, a feature film, a feature anime film called I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. Don't let the title oh, like really? <laughs> fool you. It's a really good movie. It's really beautiful. Nice, like slice of life. Um, 
film about a girl with pancreatic disease. And uh, yeah, I did a, a few bit voices in it too, not too much, but you'll hear me scattered around there. But uh, yeah, that was my first time directing and I wrote the and it was a really neat experience. I really hope everybody goes to see it. It's uh, coming to select theaters February 10th, which is actually three days before my birthday. So early oh, birthday present, birthday. guys, go see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to eat your pan pancreas, the rising of the shield, hero, and as well with the uh, Kono. Sorry, uh, name escaped me for a bit. Konosuba, God's blessing on this wonderful world. Keep a lookout for those three anime titles. Konosuba. Konosuba. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So with that said, um, what's a uh, special thanks to Erica. Thank you for taking the time to do this interview with us. It's very much oh, appreciated. Yeah. And a uh, special thanks as well to Abby and Sliv for taking the time to do this podcast as well. Be sure to check out our website at abyssalchronicles.com where Tales is our life. Follow us on Facebook and Tumblr at Abyssal Chronicles and Twitter at Abyssal C. And to the rest of you who have tuned in, thanks for tuning in and take care.